This sand dune in Cornwall is being formed as grains of sand are blown up from the beach down there and piled up to form a dune. There's an awful lot of sand here. What's it doing here? Where did it come from? How did it get here? And what is sand? I'll let you into a secret. Most of it is made up of grains of quartz. Well, in this video, we're going to go back and look at the original source of this sand and look at some of the ways in which it could have been transported here. And then back in the lab, we're going to use some simple methods to extract more information about this sand. But let's start at the beginning and go and find out where these sand grains began their journey. George is not all sunshine and sand. I've come up here 30 kilometres from the beach and I'm 300 metres high on top of a moor. We've come up here to find where these grains started their journey. And it's right behind me here, up on the top of the moor. I'm off to have a closer look. Here we are. This is the source for much of the material that forms our sandy beaches. This is a granite, an igneous rock, that formed deep within the earth and cooled very slowly. We know that because when we look at it, we see large crystals. Let's take a closer look at these large crystals. I'll take my glove off to point them out to you. I can see lovely glassy quartz, white feldspar, and small dark flakes of mica. But a quarter of this rock is made up of quartz. Why is this significant? Well, physical weathering breaks up the rock, disintegrates it. Look, it's taking place here. And once it's broken up like this, chemical weathering can get to grips on the surfaces. Now the feldspars and the micas are very susceptible to chemical weathering. Part of it goes into solution and part goes to form clay minerals, which we find is mud on our beaches and forms mud flats. The quartz is very resistant to chemical weathering and that's why we find so much quartz on our beaches. So how did it get from here down to the beach? I'm off to find out. There are three obvious ways of moving grains from their source down to the beach. There's glaciers, but there's no glaciers here. There's wind, and we've seen wind in action down on the beach, moving grains along. And there's also water. Up here on the moors, it rains for 200 days of the year, and that's two metres of total rainfall. So it's water like this in streams and rivers that's responsible for moving all these grains from their source up in the granite, downstream to the beach. Here's some loose grains I collected from under a bridge. Let's put some in the water and see how they actually move. It's not easy to see exactly how the grains are moving in the river, so here's an animation to help you. The largest grains stay in the bottom and don't move. They're too big to be moved by flow of water. Slightly smaller grains either roll along the bottom or bounce along. Whilst the very smallest grains are carried swiftly downstream, completely suspended in the flow of water. This illustrates one very important principle. The size of grain that will be moved is related to the current speed. We've seen grains being moved by wind down at the beach. We've seen them being moved here by water. Which do you think more easily moved grains. Think about it for a second. I hope you appreciated that water is much more effective at moving grains. That's because it's a much denser medium. Think about yourself. You can stand upright in a 40 mile an hour wind but I'll bet you can't stand upright in a quarter mile an hour turn of water. I'm off down to the beach now where I'm going to take a more careful look at these grains, and I hope the weather's going to be a bit better down there. You 
probably made sandcastles before, and here's two I made earlier. Let's have a look at this one. This is a river gravel we collected up on the moor, and as you can see, it's made out of some larger grains and some smaller grains. Let's spread it onto this board and have a more careful look at it. Well, when I look at this carefully, I can see it's made up of some large grain sizes and some very small grains as well. And this sort of sediment, which we have a mixture of grains, we call poorly sorted. But as a geologist, I'm not just interested in the size, I'm interested in what's actually here, what they're made of. And I can see rock fragments, I can see quartz, feldspar and mica. And there's so much feldspar and mica, that tells me that this sediment has not been very chemically weathered. We know that because it's come from very near its source, up on the moor, where we collected it from the river. Anyhow, let's get rid of this. And look at this one here. This is much, much nicer. Spread some of it on the board. Oh, this is a much more even grain size. It's none of the large fragments that we saw in there before. And we call this sort of sediment, with a much more even range of grain sizes, well sorted. But again, it's not just size I'm interested in. I'm interested in what these grains are. And there's lots and lots of quartz. So this is much more chemical weathered than the sample we looked at before. And what that tells me is this has been in the system for longer. And that's not surprising, because this sample came from a beach just here. Now, we've learned quite a lot about these sands by just looking at them here. But we can learn more by taking them back to the lab. So let's go.